Roasted red peppers in a jar are not all bad, but if you've never made like a marinated Italian style roasted red pepper at home, then you're really missing out. And since peppers are in season and I have this sandwich in mind that I wanna make, today is the day we cover marinated roasted red peppers. So let's just jump right into it. As a retired professional sandwich maker, I take the craft of building sandwiches fairly seriously. So that's why I wanted to start, start to figure out how to structure a little series where we talk about making sandwiches, but really, really, really great sandwiches. Like everything else, it's about ingredients and seeking out better quality ingredients, often in season, and make a fantastic sandwich. And today we're going to start to talk about building our way to an incredible fried eggplant sandwich. That is what we'll cover next episode. Today we need to cover one of the important condiments of that sandwich, and that is marinated roasted red peppers. Now, there's really a few ways you can roast the pepper. You could roast it in the oven, you could broil it, you could throw it right, right on the stove top, you could throw it on a grill. It really does not matter. The key thing we're aiming to do here is that the peppers have this skin on the outside and underneath it is the flesh. And that flesh underneath the skin is what we're trying to essentially harvest. And we're gonna char the hell out of this thing, essentially sacrificing the skin to release open this flesh that is going to be the, the thing that we're going to marinate in olive oil and garlic and place on sandwiches and antipasta and all of these delicious things that you could do with roasted peppers. So we keep them whole and we go on over to the stove. So get the broiler on and throw the, your peppers on a sheet tray, pop them under the broiler. If you want to use the stove top, you throw the pepper right on the stove, right above the flame. But I realized I kind of hate this method because the pepper keeps falling in between the grates. So I decided to just use my oven broiler for all three. It's just a much more efficient way of charring these peppers. So we're just gonna let them sit under the broiler. I realized I have a little bit of a hot spot on the right side. So I kind of just shifted the peppers over and I just want to blacken the skin on all sides. Once they're all charred up, you're ready to go. So we're just gonna put this in some kind of container. You could use Ziploc bag, you could use a bowl with some saran wrap on top. But the idea is we just want this to steam for like a good 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna finish kind of carry over cooking the flesh that we want and it's gonna loosen the skin up from the flesh so that we can just go in there and peel it right off and then we have perfect roasted red peppers underneath it. Then all we're gonna do is marinate that in olive oil and really, really thinly sliced garlic, which we can cut right now. So like I said, we're gonna cut this as thin as we can. It's gonna be a good size and shape to allow to infuse in the oil, I think. Now, if you're not comfortable slicing super thin, you could use a mandolin, but that's obviously really dangerous and I don't always suggest that. However, it's really important that this is cut thin. I see a lot of people who are like, knife skills don't matter, just do whatever you want. But the reality is, the way you cut something affects how it tastes. People who say knife skills don't matter just don't have good knife skills. And because they don't have good knife skills, they think they should just preach to everyone to not have it. But it's just like having good grammar in writing and good technical, fundamental understanding of something that you're doing before doing it. So, Whatever you choose to do, get it nice and thin, but we really am just gonna take my time with a little knife that I know is super sharp and just shave little thin pieces of garlic. Now I've done this so many times, so it's fairly easy for me to do this and I can do it fairly quickly. But if you're not comfortable doing it, then just go very, very slow. You'll be able to cut thin garlic if you just take it slow and over time you'll be able to speed things up. Also, when you're using a knife, you kind of want to use the thinnest knife that you can. And if you don't have a super thin knife, then the tip of the knife is usually the thinnest part and the best part of the blade to sort of cut thin slices like this. So as you can see, they've steamed and softened up. And we can just go through, just peel that skin right off. It's hot, so I'm wearing gloves. Go through, peel the skin off all the peppers and remove the stem and seeds. 
when you roast a pepper like this, you realize how amazingly juicy something like a pepper is and you kind of appreciate it in a new way. And then just now I'm gonna think about the final product. Like how do I want this to sit in a sandwich when I put it on there? So it's like this feels a little long, a little too big. Maybe let's cut it into strips. Now maybe those strips are a little long for me. I'll just cut them in half. Got a jar. I'm gonna put half of the garlic in, some olive oil, some salt. And then in goes our peppers. And then just repeat. Once you've got all the peppers in the jar, then add the rest of the garlic, close it up, give it a nice little shake, and then ideally you're gonna let this sit for a while. Just gonna get a little bit more salt in there. That's better. You can always fine tune flavors. If you wanna add some oregano in here, feel free to. But at the heart, if you let this marinate overnight and you get this time to sort of come together, get the best roasted peppers you've ever had. Which is really gonna come in handy for our next episode because we're gonna make wildly delicious fried eggplant sandwiches. So I left a, a wet paper towel underneath my cutting board overnight, which is terrible to do. I forgot to do it and see what happens. It's a little warped. This cutting board's taken a beating over the last three years. You're gonna wanna make sure you tune into next episode when we wrap up this sandwich. I appreciate all of you watching. Thanks to all my patrons scrolling up on the screen. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description below and on the screen. I also realized not a lot of you guys have that notification bell clicked down next to the subscribe button. You really need to hit that or else you're not gonna get notified when I have new videos coming out. And if you wanna get notified, you gotta click that bell. So make sure you do that. Give this video a like. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.